This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. And now, Eric John Phelps. And again, I say welcome to the broadcast on this beautiful Monday morning here in the bustling metropolis of Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. And uh, it is August the 1st, 2016. This broadcast is the Ministry of Reformation Bible Puritan Baptist Church, of which I am the older bishop by office and pastor teacher by gift. This broadcast for the spiritual and temporal benefit of my people, the minority Caucasian races of the world, including the Angles, Saxons, Celts, Slavs, Teutons, Franks, Normans, Scotch-Irish, and every other branch of the white Caucasian race. Concerning spiritual matters, this broadcasts for the edification of white men and preaching the gospel to unsaved white men, that they too may obtain salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, King of the Hebrew Jewish Israelites, and the great God and Savior of the church, that is, the body of Christ, to the exclusion of Satan's Jesuit-ruled, religio political papal Roman Catholic institution, seated in Rome, that great city and great whore which rules over the kings of the earth, especially the king in Washington, since Franklin damnable Roosevelt. Spiritually, this broadcast is also for the growth and maturity of white men in Christ, that we may continue to work out our salvation in fear and trembling, knowing that it is our holy God, the Father of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, with whom we have to do. Concerning temporal, political, cultural matters, this broadcast is also for the preservation of the racially white, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Slavic, Protestant, and Baptist peoples, historically used by God to break the power of the Pope's murderous and warring dark ages, that bloody disgrace to the history of man having spanned a thousand years from A.D. 606 to 1648. We shall be reminded that Caucasian, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and Baptist Calvinists began the Protestant Reformation, which birthed the modern era in 1648 with the Peace Treaty of Westphalia, ending the Black Pope's Thirty Years' War, waged from 1618 to 1648. Therefore, a defense will be made for the preservation of the minority, white Caucasian Orthodox Christian, Protestant Christian, and Baptist Christian peoples against our plotted racial, linguistic, cultural, historical, and national destruction by Rome, implemented by her Anglo-American international white power structure, by the way, well spoken of and clearly defined in Carol Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope, being used using the mass murdering, anti-Christ, anti-Reformation Bible religions of Sunni Islam, socialist communism, and socialist fascism, its leaders of all, all three sects, secretly working together as directed by high-level Freemasons loyal to the Pope of Rome, as well as the Papal Caesar's international white power structure imposing antichrist, unbiblical socialist communist policies, resulting in forced amalgamation, subsequent racial miscegenation, resulting in irrever- irreversible hybridization, pro-black, anti-white government discrimination, massive black-on-white crime, an international genocide by a cleverly incited and orchestrated world wars. Further, a defense will be made for the preservation of the high and lofty, yet simple white language of English, used by God to evangelize all the nations of the earth with English-speaking peoples, especially the British, Canadian, and American Caucasian peoples. Further, this broadcast calls for the voluntary separation of white Reformation Bible-believing and anti-Roman papacy, that is, we are pro-Julian calendar, anti-Jesuit Gregorian calendar, anti-World Council of Churches, Protestants and Baptists to the establishment of a new white nation within Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania having declared its independence from FDR's Jesuitical de facto military government of quote-unquote the United States, centered in Washington, D.C., ruling its provinces. Our new nation to be called pro for Protestants, Baptists, and Calvinists, to the exclusion of all other races except the racial Hebrew Jewish Israelites, 
being AV-1611, Bible-believing, gun-owning, white Caucasian nationalists, we desire to enjoy God's blessing of Genesis 12, 1 through 3, as we bless Abraham's physical seed through Jacob, which racial descendants may voluntarily live among us while preserving their own Hebrew race, to find in the scripture of truth as, quote-unquote, the holy seed and, quote-unquote, the holy people. We then seek to rival the Pope's political control over blessed Jerusalem, quote, the city of the great king, unquote, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, yet to come at his second appearing, second coming, which includes the removal of the Pope's CFR-led, Masonic, Sunni Islamic, pro-Nazi Arab leaders, as well as his CFR-led pro-Nazi, socialist communist, Masonic Jewish labor Zionists, both sides covertly working together in dividing the Lord's land given to Jacob and his physical racial descendants in Genesis 28, verses 12 through 15. For these modern-day Freemasonic, quote, Islamic assassins and Roman ta Catholic Templars, unquote, rule Rome's revived, quote, Latin kingdom of Jerusalem, unquote, i.e. Israel, for the benefit of the Jesuit white pope, Antichrist Francis I, overseen by the Jesuit black pope, Adolfo Nicholas, advised by the former Jesuit superior general, Peter Hans Kolvenbach, and to the obvious detriment of the Hebrews living therein. Lastly, this, this broadcast will seek to expose the universal power of Satan's anti-Reformation Bible, counter-Reformation, pro-cartel capitalists, pro-socialist communists, pro-socialist fascists, military company of Jesus, being in fact the revived Knights Templars, truly the devil's military and commercial company of the slain Osiris, risen to be the invincible Horus of Egyptian Freemasonic mystery religion, the actual destiny of the final Pope of Rome, to be slain and rise from the dead, then to be the invincible Antichrist, man-beast, to rule all nations for 42 months as, quote-unquote, the king of Babylon. For the order's demon-possessed, quote-unquote, Father General, the god of his surnamed, quote, Company of the Perfect, unquote, now rules every government on earth via the white pope's, quote, sovereign state of Vatican City, unquote, and its papal knighthoods on the advice of his secret ten-man Jesuit council, representing Rome's ten most powerful papal bloodline families, as well as being advised by his ten Jesuit assistants, they controlling high-level, illuminized, Satan-worshipping Scottish Rite Freemasons ruling the craft worldwide. Its designs and plots involving the control of world finance, world press, and the world intelligence community will be elucidated with historic, irrefutable citations spanning over 300 years. All peoples of whatever race or nation will benefit if the biblical principles espoused on this broadcast are applied to themselves in accordance with the Word of God, the AV 1611 Reformation English Bible for English-speaking peoples. And now to begin. Well, again, I say welcome to the broadcast. We had a great Lord's Day yesterday. In worshiping him in spirit and in truth, we had a visitor. And uh, I've known him for several years. Dear man loves the Lord. And uh, we worshiped the one true God through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he, who is the one mediator between God and men. The only mediator, the only go-between between, between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified of in due time. And so we are witnessing the wonderful fulfillment of prophecy that in him shall the nations trust. There will be nations, there will be people of every race, of every language, of every kindred, of every tongue that will believe on this Jesus of Nazareth for the last 2,000 years. This is a testimony to the truth of the scripture, to the present reality of the living God, that he is continuing to get the gospel of his son to the ends of the earth to save his elect, whom he wrote in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, pursuant to his counsel, and hence the consummation of the fullness of the Gentiles, of Romans 11, to then to the end that God would once again deal with the nations and his elect racial nation of Israel in the restoration of all things with the second coming of Christ. We, those of his church, to be with him. Amen and glory to God. Well, before I 
continue on here, I would like to uh, deal with the Democratic National Convention of last week. I want to to uh, reiterate some of the most hypocritical, wicked, lying, deceiving speakers and things that were said during those few days that outdo really the deceit of the Republican National Convention. And I have to laugh. Donald Trump says, okay, the gloves are coming off now, and he's going to go after Hillary. After Hillary. <laughs> yeah, right. If he would go after Hillary, he would do all sorts of things. If Donald Trump was the real enemy of Hellcat Hillary Clinton, and that's why I call Donald Trump Donald Strumpet, because he's a whore for the Clintons and the white power structure overseen by the Jesuits in this country, just as much as Hellcat Hillary is a whore for the white power structure. They're both equal in their prostitutions of themselves for the benefit of the Roman papacy and to the detriment of the American peoples in this country. And I am absolutely appalled at the fact that so very few white people get it. But I shall proceed. The hypocrisy, oh, by the way, if Donald Trump was really the enemy of Hellcat Hillary, he would expose, he would completely expose her plot in Whitewater. He would expose the, the assassinations of Hillary's husband, Bill Clinton, while he was president in excess of 50 people. Come on now. I mean, it's obviously provable. He would expose these matters. He would expose Hillary Clinton and her particip participation in the Benghazi massacre, the killing of those Navy SEALs, he would expose her hand in it. She most assuredly had a hand in it as she was Secretary of State at the time. Now that's if Donald Trump really wants to go after her. He would also expose the fact that she is completely in the hands of the Jesuits, just like her husband, Bill Clinton. That she has chosen a vice presidential candidate, Cain, how appropriate, Cain. The first Cain in the Bible slew his brother, Abel. And she's chose this vice presidential candidate, who was also educated by Jesuits. He would expose the power of the Jesuit order and their quest for universal empire under the doctrine of the temporal power and that they are using her to this end. He would further expose her compromise of national security and he would attack the Justice Department by name of those attorneys, and especially Loretta Lynch, the mulatto. That's what she is now. Mulattoes are always the greatest servants of the white power structure, more so than the blacks. And she would be exposed for her hand in refusing to prosecute Hellcat Hillary at the behest of her master, her immediate master, Barry Davis Obama, a.k.a. Osama, ben, Osama Barack Obama. He would also attack her for knowing full well that Barry has no legitimate birth certificate and that he was never born in Kenya and that his father's not a Kenyan. His father is Frank Marshall Davis, looks just like him. 
an American communist out of Chicago, of which there was a 600-page dossier on Frank Marshall Davis, who tutored young Barry in Hawaii for 10 years because he was Barry's daddy. Now, that's if Donald really wanted to expose Hillary because Hillary knows all about it. But he's not. He's not going to do that. Because he doesn't want to tell us the truth about the matter of the Jesuits ruling Washington, D.C. through every president since no later than Franklin D. Roosevelt. That every president is a commander-in-chief. That every president is waging war for the benefit of the Pope and to, uh, to further extend his temporal power. Donald Trump, if he was honest, would say, listen, we have a problem in America. It's called the temporal power of the Pope. And Hillary Clinton with Obama have let millions of alien Roman Catholic Hispanic invaders into this country because it's the design of the Pope and the Jesuits here. When they were using the Irish Catholics uh, in the late parts of the 1800s and the mid to the mid 1900s, they then switched to the Roman Catholic Filipinos and the Roman Catholic alien Hispanic invaders. They'll take any Roman Catholics in here of any race, of any language, any culture to further Catholicize and destroy this country that was founded by white men who believed the Reformation Bible. Back in a moment, Brother Eric John Phelps, 24-7, World Radio. This is 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 247worldradio.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish-speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the counter-reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 247worldradio.com. Tu Brat Jacek, zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradiocom Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformacji w Polsce, polskich protestantów i baptystów oraz polskiej Biblii reformacyjnej. Demaskuję również kontreformację w mojej ojczyźnie kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymskokatolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. This is brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Bruder Nicolas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Boeder Nico. U bent hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Duitse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. You're listening to 24-7 World Radio. Satanic, blasphemous, Democratic National Convention held in the black city of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is about 80% black. The 
pro the Protestant population being very much depleted, the white Protestant population. Many white Catholics there, very few white Protestants, lots of blacks, lot, many homosexuals, sodomites, lesbians. I mean, Philadelphia is a wicked city. It used to be white and Protestant. Now it's black, Roman, Catholic, and homosexual. That's a perfect city for the Democratic National Convention. Because the Democratic National Convention is going to be pro-black. It's going to be pro-sexual perversion. It's going to be pro-feminist. Got to have the feminist there now. Come on. And it's going to be have their white leftist liberals there, most of them Roman Catholics. It's a perfect city for that. So I'm going to talk about a few of the high points that I consider to be the high points of the Democratic National Convention. High points for blasphemy, hypocrisy, lies, shame, and sin. One of the first things is that I remember is the convention was for the sexual perverts. They called them LGBT people, the lesbians, the gays, the bisexuals, and the transvestites. Well, did it ever, did it ever cross their minds that maybe all that is sin? And by the way, there was a black quote-unquote biblicist there from in the NAACP from South Carolina. Not one mention that sodomy, bisexuality, transvestite, and abortion is all sin. Not one mention of it. You know why? Because they'd have thrown him out if he'd have ever said anything like that. And furthermore, NAACP has been a socialist communist organization from its initiation created by white men and certain mulattoes like, like uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, who's a Mason and a friend, was a friend of Brother Freemason Mao Zedong. The NAACP had a connection with the communist regime in China through W.E.B. Du Bois. That's right. Documented in my book. Well, we won't talk about that now, will we? Don't, don't confuse us with the facts. So, this whole LGBT thing, this acronym for lesbians, gays, bisexual, and transvents, you know, I'm gay. I'm happy. That's right, Brother Phelps, he's, he's gay, meaning he's happy. How dare they steal this term gay and apply it to the sodomites? That's not their term. That's my term. Their term is sodomy, homosexuality, lesbian. That's their term. I'm not a sodomite. I'm not a homosexual, but I'm gay, absolutely. So I'm taking back the term gay. It's our term. But these wicked sinners think they can hijack any word and make it theirs. And if you're against it, you're racist or bigoted or sexist or something like that. Shut you up, boy. So they championed the quote-unquote rights of lesbians, quote-unquote gays, bisexuals, and the transvestites. <clears throat> they don't have any rights to promote that wicked lifestyle. There was a time when it was a crime, and it ought to be a crime, and surely a disgrace. But you see now, this nation, this people, this Democratic Party has become, and the, and, and, the, and the Republicans too for that matter, just a little less severe, but the Democratic Party has become so hard that there's no such thing as sin anymore to these people. So they championed the, the quote-unquote constitutional rights of the sexual perverts Championed by the perverse Roman Catholic Supreme Court of the United States, sitting in military jurisdiction 
with its gold-trimmed flags in the Supreme Court. So, they champion the rights of these perverts. The next thing that I find interesting, well, I'll go to the NAACP guy, I forget his name, he was a big black guy from South Carolina, said he was a biblicist. Hey, well, if he was such a biblicist, he would read certain passages, certain passages like this one. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says this, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. You know what they are? They are homosexuals. Men with men working that which is unseemly, as it's described in Romans chapter 1. These people are not going to heaven. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. They are lost, and they need the Bible. They need the gospel. If you really had a concern for the homosexuals, Hillary, and you, sir, you would give them the gospel and tell God loves you. God hates your sin, but he loves you. And so he sends his beloved son to die in your place as though he were a homosexual. He's going to take the rap as though he committed every act of homosexuality and bisexuality and sodomy. He's going to die as though he was a transvestite. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to take upon himself the sin of the world so that he can forgive all those who come to God the Father by him. That's what the homosexual needs. That's the message that he needs. I don't hate the homosexuals. No man of God does. He hates the sin. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't hate the Nicolaitans. He hated their sin. He hated their deeds. He hated their doctrines. So, sir, if you were such a biblicist, you would come out and expose it with the Bible. But you can't do that now because you won't be uh, invited to Hillary Hellcat's meeting there at the Democratic Convention, will you now? Boy, because you are a boy. You're a boy for the Pope and his white power structure of which there are many blacks and mulattoes busy serving the white power structure because that's how they get paid. Got to get paid now. Got to make some kind of a living here. Even if we have to betray our own black people into the concentration camps that will open up in the future so that 21 million American Negroes can be rounded up and thrown there as was revealed in the Iran-Contra affair and investigation. Oh, but we won't talk about that, will we now? We're just going to glorify the typical socialist communist line of universal equality of all people. And if, there are, if the blacks and others are less wealthy than the whites, why we'll tax the whites to give it to the blacks. That's what we'll do. It's going to be a reorganization, a redistribution of the wealth. That's called communism. Commie communism. Socialist communism. It's wicked sin. So we have the NAACP here, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, working for the white power structure, financed by the Rockefellers when it was started in, what, 1909 or so? Now, who's another one? We have Karim Abdul-Jabbar. Karim Abdul-Jabbar. I remember when his name was Lou Alcindor. And all of us white boys, we liked Lou Alcindor, man. He had a hook shot that was tremendous. We were all practicing. We'd say, we're Lou. We're Lou Alcindor with his hook, hook, great hook shot that he would go across the key of the basketball court and he would just put it in nearly every time. Big, tall, black fellow. But then Lou joined the nation, the black nation of Islam. And he changed his name from Lou Alcindor. That was your slave name, boy. You need to take a Muslim name. So we're gonna, he's going to take a new name called Karim Abdul-Jabbar. Now, I'm not against a man changing his name if he wants to, but when he's joining a hatefully racist, anti-white, 
hatefully racist anti-white organization, then he needs to be called on the carpet for it. So they will have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar speak at the Democratic National Convention when he is a member of a cult, of a black cult in this country that hates white people. That's right. I've, se I've seen Louis Farrakhan. I've watched his videos calling white people a bunch of white bastards. I've seen Farrakhan calling for 100,000 soldiers to what? To make a race war. Farrakhan's the one who's inciting a black-on-white race war because that's why the Pope and his white power structure here is paying him. That's his whole purpose. And he admitted it to an intelligence agent that was sitting in my house about a year and a half ago, and he said he happened to meet Louis Farrakhan. He says, what's your purpose? He said, to, to foment a civil war. And the next question the guy put to him is, and who's paying you? Who's behind it? Farrakhan said, this discussion is over. Now, if they're going to be so hypocritical, if the Democratic National Convention can be so hypocritical to have a black Muslim from the hatefully racist nation of Islam that hates white people, then why don't they have a Ku Klux Klaner on there who hates black people? I mean, fair is fair, right? But then again, two wrongs don't make a right, of course. So they should never have a black Muslim, American Muslim, on, the, on their Democratic National Convention because he hates white people. And all those gutless evidently stupid white people sitting in that audience should have booed him because he's a member of a group that hates white people. What do you think the blacks would have done if there was a Ku Klux Klaner at the stage there? They would have booed him. They might have jumped up and killed him. But that just shows the hypocrisy of the Democratic National Convention. It's okay to hate white people. That's just fine. Thank God for that Jew who found a judicial watch, who's sued Obama and uh, Farrakhan and uh, Al Sharpton and all these others for fomenting a race war against Caucasians and Jews. Good for you, sir. Good for you. You did it last month, what, in July, July 5th or 6th. Well, we've dealt with the uh, NAACP, which is Masonic, by the way, in case you didn't know that, and Bule Society all throughout. And we dealt with Karim Abdul-Jabbar. Now let's deal with that Muslim guy, that Muslim man and his wife that stood up there from, well, where were they, Afghanistan or Pakistan? or Can't quite remember where they were from. from. And he attacked Donald Trump because, you see, this, this man had a son that was killed, I believe, in Afghanistan or Iraq, one of the two, one of the two countries in which the Pope's waging war with the American military, and uh, their Muslim son was killed. I'm sorry to see that. That's a travesty for anybody. But he went on to attack Donald Trump. If, when, if Donald Trump would have been president of the country when we came in, we would have not been allowed to come to America. And I say that's right. Why would any of you Muslims want to come to America that is not a Muslim country? Why would you come here? Is it not an admittance on your part that Islam and its culture is inferior to our culture that was based upon the Bible? And the very constitution, sir, that you pulled out of your coat pocket of which you have a copy, in that there's the First Amendment that, that states that there will be no, Congress shall make no law with respect to the establishment of the religion. They separated organized religion from the government. That's a Baptist distinctive, not something Jefferson wrote. Jefferson never wrote the First Amendment. It was written by James Madison at the behest of his Baptist preacher, John Leland, out of Virginia. That's the fact. So, Mr. Muslim, why would you come here in the first place? Because you have to admit, first of all, that your Muslim nations are trash compared to our nations. 
Your Muslim nations are trash compared to historic white Protestant Prussia or Germany, compared to historic white Protestant Netherlands, compared to historic white Protestant England, compared to historic white Protestant Scotland, compared to historic white Protestant South Africa, compared to historic white Protestant, uh, the Orange Free State and the Transvaal, compared to historic white Protestant Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand. Why do you come to our countries? Because your countries are trashed. And you know why they're trash? Because you're under the curse of God, because of the doc doctrines of the wicked and sinful, unholy Quran. And that's what Trump ought to bring up. Absolutely, we're not letting you in here because you consider us infidels and you seek to dis uh, uh, reduce the nation to Islam. That is a doctrine of the Quran. Your Quran is, in, is completely intolerant. And so because you Muslims are intolerant by virtue of the doctrines you believe and espouse, no, you're not coming here. And in my nation of Probaptical, you're definitely not coming in. Along with all the Roman Catholics that believe in the temporal power of the Pope. Oh, now we're getting real personal, aren't we? So this man was a hypocrite, and that little Ro Irish Roman Catholic strumpet, Megan Kelly, got all over, what's his name, uh, the former governor of, of, uh, of what was it, uh, Missouri, by saying Trump said this, and he didn't want Muslims coming in. That's right, Megan Kelly. See how long you last in a Muslim country without being gang raped, huh? And with your head uncovered. Come on now, let's tell it as it is because we're running out of time to tell the truth. We'll be back in a moment. I'll be continuing on this topic of the wicked and sinful Democratic National Convention and its reporting. This is 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 247worldradio.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish-speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the Counter-Reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 247worldradio.com. Tu Brat Jacek, zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradio.com. Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformacji w Polsce, polskich protestantów i baptystów oraz polskiej Biblii reformacyjnej. Demaskuję również kontreformację w mojej ojczyźnie kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymskokatolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. You're listening to 24/7 World Radio. Because it's done in light of the Bible, biblical truths, champion that brought about the Reformation. It's done in light of the Roman papacy, of what it's done for the last 500 years under the control of the Jesuits. And it's done in the light of current events, how the true facts, what they really are. So we've dealt with Karim. We've dealt with the NAACP. We've dealt with the hypocritical Muslim and his wife there, which he has probably put in her place physically many times. Realize the Muslims beat their women? Just like the Roman Catholic Mexicans. They beat their women, you know that? Which brings me to the next topic. The feminists. They had that white woman on there, that young white woman uh, who said, my parents are Republicans. And they're both ministers. And I thought, well, that, that's not of the Bible, so they're both serving the devil, if they're both ministers, because it's clear in the Bible that a pastor or a bishop is to be the husband of one wife, and there ain't no way a woman can do that. Unless you want to defend, pardon me, the LGBT community. So she says, both my parents are ministers of the gospel. 
and she's there to defend Hillary. And she tromps around there looking like a prostitute whore. And if there were any true Muslims in the audience, they went, boo, boo, boo. But there aren't, because they're all getting together like it's all a great big Tower of Babel, and we're all here to serve Nimrod, the Antichrist, and so we'll engage in sexual perversion, and we're here to make war for the Pope, and particularly war in America. So we have this feminist, which rightly terms feminazi, this feminist that these women are going to do and tell you the way it really is, like Cher Bono, oh, it's a woman's world. Yeah. You women don't have anything without men paving the way for you. Until I see the most dangerous jobs performed by women, till I see you women up on a scaffolding bringing in a great big yard worth of concrete so it can be poured into a concrete wall, till I see you tying rebar, till I see you doing all those things and laying block, till I see you hanging rafters and, and putting up, uh, and up on a gable, doing work like that, till I see you building something that men are terribly hurt and die in the process of, don't you talk to me about equality. That wicked doctrine of universal equality between men and women is so satanic, it's destructive of white Protestant Western civilization. You have your place, and we have our place. And your place is in submission to a man in marriage. And if you don't want to submit to him, don't get married. 75% of all divorces are initiated by you feminists. Divorcing your man wrecking his life, taking his children from him, saying they're yours and not his, is the decimation of this culture. And you feminists, you white women, have done more to destroy white men than all the blacks and all the communists and all the socialists altogether. You feminists, you white feminists have done this to us. But this Democratic National Convention, they got those feminists up there, trouncing around. Now, with the feminists, we have the we have the commentators. Oh, yeah, I should, I should bring up the commentators. One commentator is David David Axelrod. David Axelrod is a Masonic Jew, busy putting the Pope's the Pope's mulatto into office, Barry Davis Obama. So Masonic Barry can do the bidding of the Pope. David Axelrod is a lying Jew serving the Pope of Rome. And my question is, to you honest Jews that work every day, which is the vast majority of you, why don't you say anything about this? Why is there no movement? Jews against the Jews serving the Pope. David Axelrod. Henry Kissinger. It goes on and like goes on and on and on. What's that? Uh, Wolf Blitzer, the CFR member. All these Jews busy serving the Pope. Where are you, decent, freedom-loving Jews, to cry out against this? And I only know of one organization. It's called the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership. So we have this David Axelrod there, and then we have this. Another female black liberal feminist, she's there. And then we have the black guy, Van Jones, who was in the Obama administration, but he's such an anti-white racist that he had to leave his office. And now he's there as a commentator on, on the Democratic National Convention with, what was it, uh, CNN or MSNBC or what's the problem? Can't quite remember. But that's okay. It's okay to be hatefully anti-white among the Democrats. That's okay. You like it? See, this is what's building Trump. This is what's building the right-wing fascist movement because the vast majority of white men have had enough and they're ready to go to guns. That's why that Van Jones said, I'm scared to death. I'm just scared to death of what Trump had to say. You ought to be because there's a whole lot of angry white men out there that are ready to roll, ready to rock and roll, man. 
And you don't want to see an organized white culture killing black folk because it'll be a mass decimation. And I'm one of the only voices seeking to put a stop to it by exposing the plot of the Jesuits and their incitation of this. But oh no, he's on there for the agitating white folk. And then you got that Trump supporter there that's, that's on, the, on the commentator board there. And he's as oh, though he's apologetic. If I was a Trump supporter, I'd refuse to be on that board. Or if I was there, I'd be fighting with him the whole time. I wouldn't be friendly, that's for sure, because I'd have to confront all the lies that they're telling, that Trump's a racist. Trump has hired Hispanics and so on. The last thing he is is hatefully racist against anybody. But we got to paint him with a racist card, exactly as what's been done to me. Paint him with a racist card so we can turn off what he says. When you can't refute what he says, brand him with a tag that people say, oh, he's a racist, or oh, he's a sexist, or oh, he's a bigot. So no, we don't have to listen to anything he has to say. Amen? Come on now. Is that not the truth? We see that everywhere in this culture. You can't stand up in a, as, a, as an officer of any corporation and say, you know what, we have noticed that the blacks don't work as hard as the whites. And my son, who worked for Boeing, reported that to me. They get about three hours of work out of them there in South Carolina. The rest is shucking and jiving. Why can't they be disciplined? You know why? Because they're black. That's why, and any discipline of them would be a racist thing, and the corporation doesn't want to risk a whole bunch of litigation, so they put up with that. So this is the culture that we live in, and you know what? The Russians sit back, the white Russian country, and they just laugh. <laughs> yeah, they're getting weaker and weaker. So when our Russian army and navy with the Chinese attack into North America, they'll be so weak and beaten down. The white people will be so denuded there, they'll be easy game. And if Hillary gets an office, which we want to make sure she does, they're going to disarm all those white people or do their best, and then it's going to be a cakewalk. A cakewalk for the red Chinese and the Russians when they invade. That's what they want. By the way, have you noticed that there's no talk about what Bill Clinton did when he gave all our military, big military secrets to the red Chinese when he was president back in the 90s? If, if Trump really wanted to get after the Clintons, he could say, and Bill Clinton, who's the husband of Hillary, if she's going to be president, gave away our high top military secrets to the red Chinese, putting their military 25 years into the future. You read the book, You're the Rat. Read it. So we have this pretext to nationalism in the Democratic Party, red, white, and blue, when Barry Davis Obama, when he was at a meeting, I believe, in Austria, and it's a video on, that you can watch on YouTube, where he talks about, we've been building a new world order for years, and the American people are going to have to give up their rights, something along those lines. Now, why, why would not Trump broadcast that in any of his speakings. Why doesn't he show Obama up there saying those treasonous, awful, terrible words with his Secretary of State, Hellcat Hillary Clinton there, going amen and praise God. Nya, 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 nya. Why not? Because the Donald's working with him. And the whole purpose of the Donald is to make sure Hillary gets elected. That's his real purpose, white people. When are we going to wake up? I propose this. When she's put in office, that it should be an immediate call for a declaration of independence in every state where white people control it. And we're done. We're done with a socialist, communist, pro-black, anti-white, pro-sodomite, -pro anti-homos, anti-heterosexual, Pro-female, anti-male, and pro-atheist, pro, pro anti-Bible government in Washington, D.C., run by the Jesuits of Georgetown. We're done. That ought to be what ought to be done. But you know what? The white men of this country, because they don't know God and they don't know the one true God of the Reformation Bible or his blessed son, will have no courage to stand up and resist this. That's why the Jesuits took the Bible out of the schools in 1963 in the first place with their Masonic, Lutheran, 
apostate Earl Warren. Then you have Obama's speech, giving you the impression that you actually have a hand in your government, that your vote actually means something. What a lie. It's already been decided who's going to be the president, folks. Your vote doesn't mean anything. Didn't we learn anything from the election, quote unquote, between Bush and Gore? And then once it's given to Bush, the Supreme Court gives it to Bush, Gore doesn't object. Gore doesn't go out and resign. Gore doesn't have a huge awakening here and calling. You know, Gore just says, we're going to have to go along with it. Just have to go along with it. Why can't we come to the conclusion that there are no such things as a true federal election for U.S. senators and for the president? There is no such thing. Why do you think Arlen Sphincter, or pardon me, Arlen Specter, could be a senator in Pennsylvania here for five terms? You think he was really elected? The Jesuits running Philadelphia through St. Joseph's University and overseeing the archbishop there. They got him in office. There are no elections. It's called voter fraud, election tampering. And just like Joseph Stalin said, that good Jesuit tutored by Capuchins, Joseph Stalin said, it's not who votes, it's who counts the votes. So you have Obama's great big lie making you think that you have a hand in your government. And what he did, he did it for you. He did it in your name. Socialized medicine. Oh, goody. Now we're going to have Canadian socialized medicine. Where if you have a real crisis, it's going to take the doctor two or three days to get to you. Then we have Joe Biden in his defense of the sodomites. Who do you love? Who do you love? And playing upon his loss of his son, you know, which is a tragedy. I hate to see any man lose his child, but we're going to use that to play upon the fears and, and, the, and the good graces of the people listening so that they'll accept his trash that he's speaking. Joe Biden knows who killed John F. Kennedy. Joe Biden knows that the Jesuits did it. He knows that. He has two honorary degrees from Jesuits, St. Joseph's University and Scranton University here in Pennsylvania. He knows who did it. But do you think he'd ever talk about it? No, no, because it'd be bye-bye, Joe. Just like it was bye-bye, Hale Boggs, when they crashed his airplane with Nick Bagich that was with him. Hale Boggs says, Oswald didn't shoot anybody. Up, oh, bye-bye, Hale. That'd be the same way for Joe if he started talking. Here we have Bill Clinton creating sympathy for his lovely wife. If you want to read about the real Hillary Clinton, you need to get the book called Trance, colon, Formation of America by Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips. Get it? Trance, colon, Formation of America by Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips. You will be told in that book that Hillary Clinton is a flaming bisexual or lesbian and that Kathy O'Brien was compelled to engage in sexual activity with her. I'll keep it, I'll keep it not so specific with her. And Bill Clinton walks in, takes one look at it, doesn't say anything about it and says, oh, it was a hard day today, dear. That's the real Hillary Clinton. Is that who you want? And then lastly, we have Hillary herself attacking Donald Trump when she is the greatest hypocrite of all, dressed in white and with her hair just put in perfect place as though she was a queen, as though she was Isis of Egypt. And her daughter, Chelsea, talking about what a wonderful mother she was when the fact was she really, really wasn't. She didn't take her to all her things, all her, all her things that she was a part of. That was done by other people. Hellcat Hillary's to be the queen, the new queen of America. They have a queen in England. They're going to give us a queen in America. And like the queen in England, she's going to take your guns. And like the parliament in England, the parliament Congress here under war powers 
having unlimited powers to legislate anything they want to do, except by a precision Supreme Court, they're going to go behind it. They're going to go for it. And all the state governments are going to back it. Because you see, U.S. citizen, your right to own and bear arms is not a privilege of citizenship. It's only a privilege as an enemy and a belligerent living in an occupied territory. And the conquering army can take the guns of the belligerents, just like they took the gold of the belligerents in 1933. They can take your guns anytime they want to. It's just a matter of how much can they get away with. Well, this is my conclusion or evaluation of the Democratic National Convention. A thousand times worse than the Republican National Convention. But both of them are serving the Pope of Rome. And it's time that we woke up before it's too late. Support the broadcast. Be back in a moment with the reading of 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Brother Chinnicky. Station identification and prayer. Listening to 24 7.